Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. It's December 16th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Brian Babler from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Brian, thanks for being here this week. Uh, seems like there was a bit of a tug of war in the markets this week. At moments, investors were uh, looking at inflation as the biggest risk. At other times, they were looking at the risk of recession uh, as the biggest concern for the coming year. Where did uh, things end up by the end of the week? Thanks, Mike. Yeah, we certainly saw uh, some uh, some differing opinions this week. You know, we started out with a fairly positive tone uh, when CPI uh, came in lower than expected, uh, and aver average hourly earnings were uh, were down. So there was, you know, a little bit of optimism in the market that, you know, perhaps uh, the the Fed would be able to, uh, you know, uh, create some sort of so uh, soft landing. Uh, but everybody's eyes were focused on the FOMC meeting um, and rate decision, which came in as expected, um, slowing the increase to 50 basis points from 75 basis points. But what really kind of got everybody's attention was the, uh, the, the noticeably more hawkish tone than expected. Um, so that really, you know, has kind of rattled markets a little bit. Um, you know, since Tuesday's close, uh, equities, uh, you know, across the board, Dow, S&P, NASDAQ are all down, you know, between high threes and, uh, and you know, even high four percent on the NASDAQ. So um, equities definitely, um, you know, grappling with which way uh, things are going and rates to a certain extent uh, on the Treasury side, you know, a little bit more volatility um, front end. Uh, a little bit closer to unchanged, uh, and then um, a, a little bit of a steepening in the curve um, with the 10-year uh, Treasury rallying about 10 basis points or so this week, while the 30 years only uh, up about two basis points. Uh, on the on the uh, Muni side, though, you know, not a ton of activity uh, to really point to. Um, not a whole lot of volume. We had a little over four billion that priced. Uh, again, anticipating the FOMC meeting, uh, most issuers uh, avoided the market. So the the four plus billion or so that was priced was pretty um, was pretty concentrated. Uh, there really wasn't a ton of new issue activity. Uh, so on the muni side, we saw an a pretty sharp increase in one year MMD. Um, the front end was uh, up about seventeen basis points in yield. Um, but for the rest of the curve, it was pretty flat, um, you know, with today's read being pretty steady. Uh, at the end of the day, we'll most likely see, you know, a four basis point rally for most of the muni curve, um, which is unsurprising, uh, you know, considering most of the muni market is really kind of looking to turn the calendar to, to 2023. Uh, we've really seen, uh, for the most part, the, the last of the activity uh, that we'll see for the year. Next week's supply will be under a billion um, and uh, and then the the Christmas holiday uh, will uh, will probably be even in less than that. So um, you know on the muni side, um, a lot of inactivity, um, but uh, but certain things performing well um, in in the absence of uh, any directionality for munis. And as a result of that lighter new issue calendar, things like the municipal fund uh, mutual fund cash flows negative again by uh, one point two billion dollars this week, not really having a major impact uh, because uh, there's just not a lot of need to put money to work, and so uh, investors and institutions have uh, opportunities to to wait that out. Um, what uh, and so you're not it, your desk will stay open for any kind of secondary market activity uh, into the end of the year, and then how does January look? Uh, you know, I think uh, I think January should start off, you know, maybe uh, a little bit slow, but um, but things should uh, things should ramp up to kind of more average, um, you know, by hopefully by the second or third week of January. I think uh, I think there should be a decent amount of activity. Um, it sounds like um, a number of underwriters have a few things that uh, that are in the pipeline. Uh, to start the year. So hopefully we get off to a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a better start. Uh, January is always a very interesting time for munis. A lot of times you hear the January effect, um, that seasonal uh, mismatch between uh, coupon and maturity reinvestment um, and lighter supply. So, um, you know, whether or not we've seen a front running of that um, in November and December um, is uh, is to be seen. Um, but typically, you know, you would expect decent performance out of the tax exempt market uh, to start the year because of uh, because of those technical factors. So um, everybody, I think, is uh, is anticipating uh, uh, to a certain extent um, uh, some decent performance. 
um, and we'll see, uh, you know, we'll see how quickly uh, supply can ramp up um, and, uh, and test some of those waters. <laughs> Yeah, we don't usually use the word nimble in conjunction with municipal issuers, but certainly this week uh, we saw the city of Chicago uh, uh, CFO Jenny Wong Bennett, who was uh, on the Bloomberg Radio uh, remote and part of our uh, our social media feeds last week. Uh, Chicago brought a geo deal uh, to market uh, to get into uh, to take advantage of uh, a, a supply demand imbalance and it priced well this past week. They've got other transactions lined up for January, and we'll see what other uh, kind of issuers follow that lead. Um, certainly. There are a lot of uh, refunding candidates out there if if, uh, if the uh, savings targets can be met uh, in a slightly stronger market. So we'll see uh, how that comes. Well, thanks for your time, Brian. Have a great uh, end of the year. We'll talk to you in uh, 2023. Thanks, Mike.